Well, it's really an important assessment is looking into the crown of a tree because you're going to see how many leaves there are, how dense that canopy is. You'll be able to see in a tree that's affected by ash dieback how little it has in terms of tree, in terms of leaf cover. And uh, the density of the crown is usually an indication, although there are variations, you will be able to see that the tree itself has less leaves than normal. And you'll see more dead stems on the outside of the crown. So going down through the crown, you'll see that the dead outer twigs that were the remnants of the old structure of the, the canopy. And then inside you'll see less leaves. And then inside that you might see more of the structure of the tree than you expect because of that lack of leaves. So the one to four scale of categories of the decline of a, an ash tree. So you've got at the top, well, category one is the best and that's 75 to 100%. Uh, of all of the leaves that should be on the tree are on the tree, down to 50% to 75% and you've, you've lost nearly half the condition of the tree or the half of the leaves of the tree. That is the point that um, you will be certain that it's actually being affected by ash dieback and that's a really good time to start planning. So anything below 50%, 50 to 25%, there's still some remaining uh, leaves on the tree but you'll see more deadwood and fewer leaves, very few leaves and down to that 25% to 0% you've pretty much got the most of the tree is dead and you will probably have a very if maybe one or two branches with leaves and that's category four and you can't avoid felling when the tree is nearby to things which might be affected by the failure of the tree such as roads and and buildings and people retention of a tree is possible in a woodland environment where there are no footpaths or where there are no people or where maybe even hedgerows so for the most part, the trees that we're focusing on is the trees that are right by the highway, you know, by roads, by busy roads and busy footpaths and by buildings. The trees that are away from that can be left. It's not just the sense of uh, romanticism, it is the sense that actually we have got dependent species. Species of fungi right across to invertebrates and, you know, into bats and birds that actually rely not solely on but for the most part on the environment created by the ash. It's recommended you check every year and there's a premium or the peak time or the best time is actually when you're looking around about May, June time. So when you're thinking about recording, it is important that you don't try and add any new layers or do something completely different. Most people will have a map of their farm or of the area in which they, they live. You are able to mark that, you know, where the locations of the trees and their condition on a standard map, on a paper map, just so that you've got them recorded. It's just recording them and recording their, their condition in one year because you can forget from one year to the next. So using Google Pins is another way of actually recording data on your ash because it's free and it's something that you have available to you and you can use 30 characters available on each pin to actually show how that tree is doing in every year. So mapping is important, but it's really your awareness that's the most important thing and being aware of trees in these public spaces and in these more commonly used areas.